Hey, this is me, Chris. I'm doing my presentation on superbikes. Uh, this is my first slide, which is going to be talking about the stock requirements for racing. This is going by the British Superbikes Guide. Uh, referring to six motorcycles which are also uh, conduct in the BSB championships. These motorcycles are Honda, Suzuki, Ducati, Kawasaki, Yamaha, and BMW. In order to actually compete in the Superbike Championship, which is mostly circuit racing throughout Europe and also a lot of other off-road uh, competitions for different bikes, you actually have to follow a strict guideline which prohibits you to actually do extreme modifications to the bike. You can't modify the subframe, the frame, or the swing arm. That's to say stock, um, almost completely stock. There's slight motor modifications you're able to get away with, but other than that, you're completely racing stock bikes so that way you're, you're kind of going against somebody of equal uh, equal quality, basically. So it's all about the driver. Then we have the origin of history. The origins and history of superbikes, the ones we now know today, all pretty much flourished after World War II and World War One. The flourishing happened because the United States and the other allies decided to pay back the companies and uh, assist the countries that we, we fought. But that's not the main reason. The main reason was because these companies all started off producing other things, such as Suzuki, which started off producing looms, they ended up producing motorcycles. BMW, they started producing, they started off producing aircraft and then switched to motorcycles. Kawasaki, which which actually bought another motorcycle industry out and decided and was the biggest producer of 500 cc bike one of the most powerful at the time allowed them to flourish and and sell these motorcycles because people needed a quick way to get around and they needed something inexpensive and cheap because these countries were still at loss after the war yamaha which is one of the most outstanding i feel was a hometown industry that took extreme advantage of this and actually pioneered a lot of uh, newer equipment such as the snowmobile which is actually extremely helpful the four wheeler some new, newer boat motors Honda, which actually started off from a blacksmith, and then around the end of World War II, he got interested in the Grand Prix and started building motors for bikes. And there also was Ducati, which was an Italian company. And during World War II, their company was bombed by the Germans, and they ended up switching from producing radios to producing motorcycles. The fastest superbikes. This, this is going to be in backwards order, so six is being the slowest. was a Ducati 1098. This bike is a liquid cooled motor with a fixed speed transmission and its max speed is 169 miles per hour. The BMW K1200S, which is also a liquid cooled motor with a six speed transmission, uh, six speed chain transmission at a, with a top speed of 174 miles per hour. The Kawasaki Ninja ZX11, or also known as the ZZR 1100 was a liquid cooled motor with a four stroke four cylinder dual overhead cam motor which produced a uh, whopping 176 miles per hour as its max speed. The third on our list is the Yamaha YZF R1 or known as the R1000 as some people know. It had a dual overhead cam liquid cooled motor. Most of these bikes do have liquid cooled motors and also dual overhead cam which is pretty much the standard. Also a six speed transmission that runs off chain with a whopping speed of 186 miles per hour. And second for the top is the Honda CBR 1100XX, also known as the Blackbird. This bike's been around for a, real, uh, a good bit of time, and they're, they're kind of quick. They produce uh, 1,137 cc's. They're a liquid-cooled bike with a six-speed transmission and the power to reach 190 miles per hour as its max speed in perfect conditions. Now the top bike, which you probably see a lot of if you ever go on the bike week, is the Suzuki Hayabusa with a whopping 1,340 cc's in a four-stroke liquid-cooled motor with a dual overhead cam with 16 valves. This is a six-speed constant mesh transmission, which means it allows it to continue and to have a blazing speed of 248 miles per hour. The NHRA, which is the National Hot Rod Association, uh, has set standards for tracks such as drag strips and also circuit tracks in the United States and has set standards for the way to build motors and safety frames such as if you've ever seen NASCAR you have to have a safety frame and also some other safety regulations so they have set standards but if you're racing off the strip or even on smaller drag ships you have such things as turbo kits, turbo chargers, air shifters, power commander, dyno jets and exhaust systems which actually all increase your horsepower except for the air shifters which allow you to shift quicker so you can leave the whole fashion and actually win a competition the future of bikes. The future of bikes are almost completely unlimited. The future of bikes at this moment has brought us to the Dodge, the the new Dodge motorcycle has come out. That motor is a, uh, a is a V12 motor 
and it has four wheels that are alternating turn. Then we also have the new spectator bikes, which is the one on the left. That bike is is, is a, uh, a idea coming into power. And then we have the one in the middle, which is a current day bike, which is I think it's actually a Hayabusa. And they they're actually trying to update it with systems that way it can increase using dyno jets, but it's a bike that's not actually in store.